Once inside DaVinci Resolve, to create the transition, we'll need the video clip with the eye and another video that will appear when we enter the eye. I recommend that this second video has a forward camera movement, similar to what you're seeing in the example. Before starting the transition, make sure there's no camera movement in the eye shot. Ideally, it should be a still shot. To correct or remove camera movements, go to the Inspector menu and scroll down to the Stabilization option. We need to select the Similarity mode and check the Camera Lock box. Click on Stabilize and now your video should be completely static. If we play the video, we can see that we have a still shot without any movement. The eye remains in the same position throughout the entire video. Next, we zoom in to make the pupil as large as possible and occupy most of the screen. Adjust the position so that the eye is right in the center. Now, let's zoom in a bit more. Perfect, we have finished adjusting the eye video. The next step is to place the eye clip on the upper track on video track two and place the landscape video just below it on video track one. I recommend leaving a small gap at the beginning as at the start of the transition, only the eye video will be visible. And right here is where the transition to the landscape video will begin. Then the transition will progress. We'll zoom in on the eye's pupil and around this part is where the transition will end. We've finished setting everything up. Let's start with the transition. Select the eye clip and go to the color module in DaVinci Resolve. Great. The first step is to find a frame in the video where the entire eye pupil is clearly visible. As you can see, in this frame, the eye is half closed and covers a large part of the pupil. Look for a frame where it looks much better. For example, this part of the video would be perfect. Let's create a mask on the pupil. Click on the empty node to create the mask, then click on the window panel. On the left side of the menu, we have different types of masks to choose from. In this case, we can select the circular mask as it's the most suitable for selecting the eye's pupil. Click on the circular mask and as you can see, a circle will appear in the viewer. If we enable the highlight function, we can see what's actually selected in this circular mask. Perfect, now it's very simple. We just have to select the part of the pupil with the mask. Adjust the size of the mask by clicking on these small circles. Make sure the mask is exactly the same as the eye's pupil. These small circles with a red border are for modifying the edge feathering of the mask. I recommend applying some feathering so that the mask's edges are smoother and have a slight gradient. Perfect. Once we've correctly placed the mask on the eye's pupil, if we change the frame of the video, we can see that the mask does not follow the movement of the pupil. Additionally, we have another issue. The mask selects part of the eyelid, and that's not what we want. The mask should only select the pupil. All right, first let's do the motion tracking, and then I'll show you how to solve the issue with the eyelid. To do the motion tracking, we'll select a smaller part of the pupil, so that the movement of the eyelid doesn't affect us. Okay, let's track the movement of this part here. We go to the tracking panel, I recommend disabling the Perspective 3D option since this type of video doesn't have 3D movement. It's a still shot. Next, click on this icon with two arrows to start tracking the movement. Okay, let's check that everything is correct. It's not completely perfect, but it'll do. Now, let's readjust the mask to match the size of the pupil exactly as we did before. Perfect. Once we have the mask finished, we'll do the following. In the node panel, right click and add an alpha output. By adding an alpha output, a blue circle will appear on the right. We need to connect the node where we created the mask to the alpha output, like this. Now we will only have the video with the selection we made, i.e. the circle with the pupil. But what we want is the opposite. We want the part with the entire eye and have the pupil transparent to create the transition. Inverting the mask selection is straightforward. We go to the window panel. In the circular mask we created, this one here, we need to click on the icon of a circle inside a square. Click on it, and that's it. Before moving on, check that the mask is correct and the edges look good. 
To see the mask better, I recommend deactivating all these circles and lines by clicking on this little arrow and disabling the power window option. Now we can see the mask perfectly. Okay, it seems to be perfect and the edge feathering looks good too. Now I'll show you how to solve the issue with the eyelid and the mask. We need the eyelid to overlap the circular mask. How can we do this? Well, it's very easy. We'll create another mask specifically for the eyelid and lashes. We locate a frame where the eyelid is clearly visible. Then we'll create a mask for the eyelid in this entire area. This time, we'll use a customizable mask to create the shape we want. Click on the mask with the pen icon, and now simply left click, selecting the entire eyelid area that we need. To create the mask, we connect the last point to the first one, and we're done. Let's adjust the area around the lashes, which is the part we care about. Perfect, we've solved the problem. But wait, not so fast. Just like we did with the previous mask, we need to do motion tracking so that the mask follows the eyelid's movement. The first step is to make sure we've selected the newly created eyelid mask and not the circular pupil mask we made earlier. Don't track the circular pupil mask again. Select the eyelid mask and go to the window panel. I won't use Perspective 3D since the eye video is a still shot. Now, click on the icon with two arrows. Great, it was really quick. As you can see, the mask now perfectly follows the eyelid's movement. Review and position the mask as best as possible. Finally, to make it look even better, let's apply some soft to the mask's edge. If I disable the window option, you can see that the mask's edge doesn't look good. It cuts abruptly through the eyelid and lashes. Let's fix this by applying some soft to the edge of our mask. Go to the window panel, select the eyelid mask, and increase the soft a bit. Now it looks perfect. We have finished creating the masks. Check that everything is correct throughout the entire video. If in your video, the eyelid doesn't cover the pupil, you would only need to create one mask. You could skip all these steps and it would be much easier to do. If you're wondering why there's a black background inside the pupil at the beginning of the video, remember that at the start of the tutorial, when we placed the landscape video, we left a small empty space. That's why the pupil appears completely black. The pupil cannot be completely black. We need to restore the original video inside the pupil, meaning that there should be no black background inside the pupil. In other words, the reflection or image that would normally be seen in the pupil should be present instead of pure black. Restoring the original video inside the pupil to use at the beginning of the video is super simple. We go to the window panel. Next, we need to create a new mask. We'll add a new circular mask by clicking on this icon here. As you can see, we've restored the original video inside the pupil. Now, there are some small reflections and orange hair passing in front, and it's no longer completely black. Perfect. Now select the new circular mask we just created. We can adjust the opacity of this mask. If we set it to zero, we'll have absolute black. And if we set it to 100, we'll have the original pupil. Knowing this, what we're going to do now is gradually lower the opacity to achieve a transition from the original pupil to our landscape video. For this step, it's recommended to activate the timeline interface by clicking here. This way, we can see the timeline within the color module. We'll choose the exact moment when we want the transition to end. That is, the moment when the landscape appears completely inside the eye and the pupil is no longer visible. This part of the video would work well. Here is where the transition will end, right at this frame. To create the transition, we simply need to create a keyframe. To do this, click on the small diamond next to Corrector 1. When activated, it will appear in red. Corrector 1 responds to Node 1 where we created the masks. For example, if you've created the mask in Node 2, you will need to create a keyframe in Corrector 2. Next, we'll lower the opacity to zero, and as you can see, the landscape video appears inside the eye. Now we need to go back in the video and select the first frame of the landscape click, right at the end of the empty space we left, precisely at this frame here. Perfect. Next, we'll increase the opacity of the mask to 100 and the transition will be complete. If we play the video, we can see that at the beginning of the video, the pupil appears as it should 
and gradually the landscape starts to appear. This is what we wanted to achieve, a smooth transition from the pupil to the landscape. Let's see how it turned out. In case we want to adjust the speed of the pupil transition, we simply need to go to the keyframes of corrector one and modify the position of the second keyframe. I want it to be faster, so I'll move it to the left. As we can see, now the transition is much faster and shorter. Great, let's move on to the most interesting part of the tutorial. Now I'll show you how to properly create the zoom transition and enter inside the eye. The first thing I'll do is center the landscape shot. I select the landscape clip and then we'll position the person in the video right in the center of the pupil. It will look much better aesthetically. Perfect. As we can see, now the person appears in the center of the pupil. In case there's no person in your video, I recommend placing the element that grabs the most attention and can be clearly seen inside the eye's pupil. Great, we finished this step. There's no mystery to it. You just need to position the inner eye video properly. Now I'll show you how to apply the zoom to the eye clip for the transition. Positioning ourselves right at the first frame of the video, here. We select the eye video clip and go to the inspector panel. Next, we create two keyframes in zoom and position. Now we need to advance to the part where we want the transition to end. That is, the moment when we have entered the eye completely. I think it would be good to end the transition around this part here. Again, we create two keyframes in zoom and position. Now we need to increase the zoom and position the pupil in the center of the screen using the X and Y axis. We zoom in and position until we've entered the eye completely and nothing of the eye video is visible anymore. Let's see how it turned out. It looks perfect. If you want to decrease or increase the speed of the zoom, you can do it this way. Click on the diamond icon that appears on our clip. If the icon doesn't appear, simply zoom in on the timeline to enlarge the clip and view it. Now we can see the two keyframes we created in Zoom. Here we have the initial keyframe we created at the beginning of the video. And here we have the second keyframe we made. To modify the speed, simply move the second keyframe. Do you want the zoom to be faster? Then move it to the left to make the animation shorter. And now the zoom will be much faster. I don't want it to be that fast, so I'll move the keyframe a bit to the right. If you want to learn how to create many more effects, take a look at this free DaVinci Resolve course. If you liked this video, all the videos in the course are of the same style. That's all for today. See you in the next video.